Hello everybody, Mobius1 here bringing you another Star Wars Unlimited deck, tech, and gameplay video using the website Carabast. In this video, we're going to be examining my, as always, work in progress version of the yellow or cunning Grand Moff Tarkin deck that's been floating around in the meta I like to call Lurkin Tarkin. The deck gets its name from the card it's built around, the Lurking Tie Phantom. For those unfamiliar with Lurking Tie Phantom, it is a yellow-black, three-cost, 2-2 two -two space unit with Raid 2 and the text, this unit can't be captured, damaged, or defeated by enemy card abilities. This card has caused a bit of confusion amongst some players, so real quickly, let's just go over what exactly that text means. The simplest way to explain it is that the only ways this card can be defeated is either through direct combat damage, either by attacking or being attacked by another unit, or by having its HP reduced to zero through debuff effects. For instance, a card like Overwhelming Barrage cannot harm the Lurking Tie since it cannot take damage from enemy card effects. Similarly, if your opponent plays Power of the Dark Side, you can actually still choose the Lurking Tie Phantom as the target. However, nothing will happen since the Lurking Tie cannot be defeated by enemy card effects. However, a card like Make an Opening, which does not deal damage but instead debuffs the Lurking Tie, would defeat it so long as the minus two minus two reduced its remaining HP to zero. It's also probably worth noting that Traitorous is also a way to deal with the Lurking Tie Phantom because taking control of a unit with Traitorous is not the same as capturing it. With such a powerful ability, it's not surprising that an entire deck was built around this card, though I have seen quite a few variations of it online. Let's go over mine. Before we get into the cards, though, it's important to remember that Tarkin's leader ability allows you to pay one resource and exhaust him to give an Imperial unit an experience token. Then, once Tarkin deploys on five resources, that ability becomes a free on attack ability. This means the aim of the deck is to somehow get a unit or two to stick around on the board and receive constant buffs from both other card effects as well as Tarkin himself. So, with that in mind, our turn one plays include three copies of ISB Agent, three copies of TIE Fighter, two copies of Scanning Officer, and three copies of Incinerator Trooper. If you get really unlucky and don't draw any of those, you can play either an Outland TIE Vanguard or a Snowtrooper Lieutenant on turn one, but ideally you want to save those until you have another unit in play to benefit from their abilities. Both the ISB Agent and TIE Fighter only cost one resource, meaning you can play them and buff them with Tarkin right away, leaving you with either a 2-4 in ground or 3-2 in space, both of which aren't bad. And while the primary win condition of the deck is the lurking tie in space, getting a beefed up incinerator trooper in the early game can actually help you steamroll the ground arena. Since the incinerator trooper deals combat damage to the defending unit first when it attacks, it's possible to use it to just remove units as soon as your opponent puts them into play without taking any damage in return. Unfortunately, since it starts off as a measly 2-2, it can be tricky to get one to stick around long enough to really become a serious threat. However, following up a turn 1 incinerator trooper with a turn 2 snow trooper lieutenant or surprise strike, both of which only cost 2, allow the incinerator trooper to clear your opponent's turn 1 play then buff it with Tarkin using your last resource. That can be quite a strong opening. Jumping back over to the space arena, turn two allows us to either play the Lurking Tie itself or a 7th Fleet Defender, which is a 3-2 shielded. If your opponent hasn't played a space unit yet, getting the Lurking Tie out early can lead to a quick victory, but if there's anything in play ready to oppose it, you really shouldn't send it to its death and instead just play a Defender. Once you get a unit or two to stick around on the board, TIE Advanced is a really great way to start pumping up their stats by giving a unit two experience tokens. The event card Triple Dark Raid allows you to search the top seven cards of your deck for a vehicle and play it for a discount of five resources, meaning it can pull TIE Advanced for free. 
Whatever unit you do play with Triple Dark Raid enters play ready, but then does return to your hand at the end of the phase. This can actually be a really good thing because it means you essentially get the win played effect of the unit twice. Meaning you can get a total of four experience tokens off of one tie advanced. Once you get a lurking tie up to like a 5-5 five five or a 6-6, six six, there's really not a lot your opponent can do to get rid of it. The deck kind of gives you the choice of either fighting for the ground arena in the late game with cards like ATST and Reinforcement Walker, or ignoring it completely and trying to shut it down through the use of cards like Outmaneuver, No Good to Me Dead, Overwhelming Barrage, and Swoop Down. I did include two copies of Relentless just to have a heavy hitting space unit to close out games that go long. And the sideboard consists mainly against cards to help against fast paced aggro decks that can easily overwhelm the ground arena. Two Viper Probe Droids, two Season Shore Troopers, and an extra Phase 3 Dark Trooper, all of which can be buffed by Tarkin, should help provide a bit more fighting power against decks like Green Sabine. Then three copies of Bazin Natal are included to help deal with hard control decks by letting you force them to discard their heavy removal cards like Super Laser Blast or Avenger. Two copies of Strike True are in there for now to use as another means of cross arena damage dealing in case you're doing well on one side of the board but your opponent is crushing you on the other. But there might be better sideboard options out there. I'm really open to hearing your guys' thoughts in the comments. Overall, the deck is super fun to play and can be amazingly powerful when you get the right draws. Like I said earlier, there are a couple different versions of this deck out there, but if anyone has any card swap suggestions for the deck, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Let me know what you think might be a better choice over something else. But with all of that out of the way, let's head over to Carabast and see how we do. Green Sabine. We're going to slot in some of those ground units I was talking about earlier. Uh, what should we take out? The Outland Tie can probably go... Uh... I don't think the Relentlesses are going to be much of a help, so let's just go with that and see what happens. Alright, our opening hand. We do have Scanning Officer. We have a Tie Fighter. I'm going to keep this hand. We're going to try in Overload Space with the Tie Fighter. We'll play the Tie Fighter. We'll buff it. Turn two, we might no good to me dead. It really depends on what we draw. I'm hoping we draw either the Lurking Tie or a 7th Fleet Defender for turn two. But, uh, yeah, it's not going to be... It's not going to be great. Do we want to just recklessly abandon ground? No, I think... Ugh, yeah, actually, I think that's probably the right play. All right, that's it. We're going to go all in on space for this. And hopefully it pays off. This is very risky. Very, very risky, but could be fun. It's going to be fun. All right, we'll play the tie, then we'll buff it. Pass. We did draw a triple dark raid. Hmm. We're going to have to resource the reinforcement walker because it's so darn expensive. We might not even, this game might not even last until we get to eight resources, honestly. Triple dark raid, getting another tie advance would be nice. Alright, so we'll resource that. Let's see what they decide to do. Oh no, they're ECLing a wing leader. Well, shucks. Alright, now we kind of want to pull a 7th Fleet Defender from Triple Dark Raid because we could use that to take out the wing leader and then it'll bounce back to our hand. So let's see what we get. Unreal. The only thing that we can pull is the tie. Oh, that's so bad. That's really, really unfortunate. Okay, he's trying to undo something. Oh, I guess he's he somehow missed out on buffing his Spec Force Soldier with Wing Leader. Because it should technically be a 4-4. Four four. Okay, there, we figured it out. Well, I mean, we kind of have to do what we did. Yeah. This is really unfortunate. I mean, can we even contest 
ground at this point. He's got a 4-4. Four, four. He's about to deploy Sabine. I think we got to just resource the ATST and continue to push space. Okay, well, he just put Heroic Resolve on that guy. I think it's about time we no good to me dead that. I was kind of saving it for Sabine. Buff up our TIE Fighter. Claim initiative. All right, well, we did get Lurking TIE and Outmaneuver, so those are both really good draws. We can resource the Viper Probe Droid. All right. How do we want to handle this? I think if we... So let's do some math. If we use Tarkin, we're going to have four resources left. We could... I mean, we could just... Yeah, because Red 3 is going to have Raid 1. I think we just take Red 3 out with the tie. Again, if we're going to win this, we need to we need to take some risks. So I'm taking Red 3 out. And we're going to simply play the Lurking tie. I don't... Okay, Poe, that's terrifying, but that's what we have outmaneuver for. All right, so we're going to give the tie, the lurking tie, an experience. We're going to be able to deploy Tarkin. We can attack the base and give it another experience and then pass. He's only going to get one attack off on ground before we can uh, outmaneuver. Oh, and we got two. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Do we need to keep overwhelming Barrage? <laughs> I think we can only afford to keep one surprise strike. Wait, we're going to attack for four, no, six, nine, twelve, potentially fourteen. Oh, it's so close, but he's got so much damage on board, too. Okay, okay. Oh, God. I think we give up Overwhelming Barrage here. Yep, because what we're going to do, we're going to outmaneuver the ground. Which doesn't let us buff with Tarkin, but it does prevent... Oh, it prevented lethal. But... Uh, he's going to take initiative next. I, uh, I just... It's too little, too late. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what we do here. Damn. Oh, we even drew our second outmaneuver. But one swing is all it takes. Oh, yep, and we lose. Good game. Well, there you go. I don't win every game that I put into these videos. I know the last two episodes I went undefeated, but I lose games too. Okay, we have yellow Han. Double yellow Han. I don't think I want to make any sideboard adjustments. Let's just go straight into this game and see what happens. All right, opening hand. We don't have anything except Snowtrooper Lieutenant, so we're going to go ahead and mulligan. That didn't make things much better. We do have Scanning Officer, uh, and we have Lurking Tie for turn two. Let's give up Relentless, and we'll give up a Surprise Strike. They're going to be going first. This is interesting. So they did use Han's ability to get themselves a third resource. So if we play Scanning Officer and we hit a Smuggle resource, it's going to take one away from them. Oh, we got two! Millennium Falcon and uh, DJ both got discarded. So they're, they're reduced to one resource on turn one. That's brutal. He said, ouch. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Well, there you go. Scanning officer, don't sleep on her. That phrasing. Anyway, we'll, re uh, we'll resource the reinforcement walker. All right, I mean, that does give us a bit of an edge here, although... I don't know. It's really going to depend on what they play. All right. Ooh, Ezra. So. Uh, we've got three resources. They're going to take the initiative. I think I think the, the tie is the play here. 
So let's uh, let's swing for two to base. See if they take any initiative, which is what I'm expecting. Yep. We'll throw the tie out there and pass, and let's see if they've got a way to deal with it. No good to me dead's probably going to help. The Snowtrooper Lieutenant is probably a little bit better than Surprise Strike here, because we could use that, and it'll give us a 2-2 body. So let's give up... See, I don't think we're ever going to play the Incinerator Trooper. And yeah, let's give up the Incinerator Trooper. Cunning, yeah. Okay, so the Lurking Tie is also susceptible to, to bouncing. Uh, are they going to return exhaust units and discard random? Okay, so I, they ended up discarding Surprise Strike. Can Does Cunning not bounce units? Yeah, return a non-leader unit with four or less power to its owner's hand. Why they didn't bounce this is kind of surprising to me. Uh, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and triple dark. Oh, oh they have another Cunning. That could be really bad. Uh... I kind of want to save this. Let's go ahead and triple dark raid. Oh my god, again, we're not getting tie advanced, but fine, we'll take the uh we'll take the 7th fleet. All right, so Ezra takes out scanning officer. We'll swing for 3. And we'll buff the tie since the Seventh Fleet Defender is going back to hand. We have two Seventh Fleet Defenders now and the ATST. Again, we're faced with a decision: should we resource the ATST and go ham in space, or should we save this just in case? I think we should save it. We'll give up one of the Seventh Fleets. There's another cunning, so I'm fully expecting to be bounced. Yep, return unit, buff unit. Okay, well now that Ezra's got seven attack, that's a good opportunity to no good to me dead that. Leaves us with three resources. All right, let's get this out there. Deploy Tarkin. Oh, okay, well Tarkin didn't even get a move off, but that did, again, prevent damage to our base. So we'll claim initiative. He's down to one card. All right, tie advanced, overwhelming barrage. The overwhelming barrage can be useful to deal with Ezra. But we could also just plop the ATST. The ATST could be really powerful here. I think we can give up the. Let's give up the snow trooper lieutenant. I think contesting ground here is actually the way to go. Hmm. Yeah, let's. Let's Oh, actually if we overwhelming barrage, we can you we could take out Han. Let's do that this turn. So we'll overwhelming barrage the Phantom, do all four damage to Han. That takes out his leader. I like that play. Okay, good. Well This is gonna die now, isn't it? Even if we buff it. We have to buff it, but it's gonna lose it's going to take uh, minus two, minus two at the end of the round and die. But at least we got seven damage in. I think that was still the right play. ATST is super strong now. I think we can give up out maneuver because we're shifting. We're going to be shifting over to ground. So exhausting every unit in the ground arena, not as powerful as it would have been. So yeah, let's get that ATST in play. Again, super vulnerable to like waylay or uh, collect the bounty. Or no, not collect the bounty, spare the target. Okay, well, he's got space units too, apparently, but we can buff the ATST, make that even scarier. He took initiative instead of attacking with R2D2. That scares me. That actually kind of worries me a little bit. I guess we give up swoop down since we don't have any space units. There's the waylay. That's fine. We'll just play it again. The attack space with Ezra. Oh no, Spark of Rebellion. Yeah, there goes the Overwhelming Barrage. That's fine. We'll buff it again. Claim initiative. Grogu. We can give up a tie advanced. 
Reinforcement Walker, again, are also could be very useful here. Um, what could Grogu be doing in that deck? I think Ezra's got to go. Let's take out Ezra first. That's going to carry five damage over. And Bodhi just got rid of our surprise strike. Uh, let's get the walker out and start healing. So no, we can we can discard the outland tie to heal. Outmaneuver might actually be useful here to suppress the space arena at this point. All right, we don't need to resource anymore. Nine resources is where this deck tops off at. So, oh, that's right. Grogu can be used to exhaust units. I totally forgot about that. Oh, uh, whatever. Should we just push for lethal? Or should we still control? Controlling is probably not a bad idea. Um, so let's take out Bodhi and just save ourselves the three damage. And we have lethal as long as he can't heal or bounce. He's got nine resources and two cards. If we claim initiative here and he's got no way... Oh, he said GG. All right, let's claim initiative and see what happens. I wonder if his GG is a bluff. Mm, nope. All right. Well, that was a totally unorthodox way of winning. But there you go. ATST won the game for us. We got to see the lurking tie in action for a little bit, but it didn't last very long. I would like to at least have one game in this video where we get to pop off with the lurking tie so you guys can at least see how the deck is supposed to perform, but it's kind of out of my hands. Let's see what we get next. Uh, okay, uh, Red Ray again, just like in the last video. Let's uh, let's slot in some Bazine Natals and we'll take out, let's take out two of the Outland ties and let's just go with that. We definitely could use the Baz the yeah Bazines to um, force crate dragon discards, which could be really nice. Opening hand, we got quite a few options here. So we've got ties to go space. We could follow that up with seventh fleet. Alternatively, we've got ISB agent and incinerator trooper to go ground. Ground is secondary in this deck, so I'm gonna say no to the mulligan, and we're gonna go space. So in that case. Since we want to invest heavily in space, I'm resourcing both the ISB agent and the incinerator trooper. I want to hang on to outmaneuver because I'm intentionally abandoning ground. So we'll go ahead and play the tie. They played R2D2, which she's going to buff up to a 2 5. We can buff our tie to a 3 2. And then pass. We got Relentless and another Swoop Down. Relentless, even though we're going heavy into space, it's going to take us so long to get to nine resources, we have to give that up. Swoop Down's actually going to help us out quite a bit here. Oof. Okay, Concord Dawn Interceptors does stop our uh, space push quite a bit. Um, but we're still, we're going to go ahead and just play our 7th Fleet Defender. And then... Yeah, swoop down actually we could have used swoop down to use to uh take out R2D2, but we're gonna claim initiative here. Uh our seventh fleet defender is gonna be oh, this is such a good hand. Such a good hand. We can give up a swoop down here. Uh we're gonna buff our seventh fleet defender. That'll make it a four three. Which is enough to take out the Concord Dawn Interceptors, and if they decide to attack the TIE Fighter... Oh, I guess they could buff it. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, in that case, should we just play our other 7th Fleet? Uh, he could buff it again next turn. Hmm. Let's just take it out. Let's see what happens. So you're going to take out the tie or go for base? All right, fine. Uh, but you know, let's play our other 7th Fleet Defender and pass. Because now we have the we have a, the potential of... Uh, oh, we got initiative. There we go. 
So we can use our new 7th Fleet Defender, the one that still has a shield token, to take this out at the beginning of the next turn. Or next round. Hey, we got our tie! Alright, let's give up Scanning Officer, because we don't care about ground. He played another one! Okay. Alright, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take you out now. I imagine he's going to buff this one up to a 2-5. Open fire? Ooh, okay. Well, we're going to give experience to the TIE Fighter so that... No, because now he's going to buff the, the Interceptor. Okay. It's time for swoop down. Time for swoop down. Goodbye, R2-D2. I'm really surprised he did two damage to the base there. That seems like a bad play. But now we can deploy Tarkin. We're going to save this for Ray. We can attack the base, and let's buff the TIE Fighter. And then we cannot play Lurking Tie because he'll just kill it with the uh, Interceptors, so we have to pass. Okay, really good. Two outmaneuvers to absolutely shut down ground. We can give up the ISB agent. He really should take out the 7th Fleet Defender. Wow, that was not really a great play, bro. But that's fine. So we're trying to pave the way for our lurking tie. Yep, there's Ray. So we're going to go ahead and no good to me dead Ray. Because we don't... The Ray's restore three is absolutely insane. So this way it... Oof, okay. Wrecker is kind of scary. Uh, but it's no resources left, so we can safely play lurking tie. We can swing to base with Tarkin and buff the Lurking Tie. Get three damage in with the Seventh Fleet and then pass. Okay, well, I wish we were getting some buff units, either like the uh, Outland Tie Vanguard, Tie Advanced, or Triple Dark Raid. We'll give up the Phase 3 Dark Trooper. I expect Wrecker to go into Tarkin. That's fine. Uh, we can Overwhelming Barrage. If we do that, that's going to get five. That's enough to take out Wrecker. So let's do that. Uh, and one's going to go to Ray. And we've already dealt with two of his Concord Dawn Interceptors, so there might be one more in there somewhere. We want to uh, attack with the 7th Fleet Defender first because it only has 2 HP. I don't see any way in which they could remove it right now, but you never know. Pass. And uh, I believe Surprise Strike is going to bring us to lethal, if not really close. Uh, well, he could attack with Ray. Probably should attack with Ray to get that Restore 3 in. Takedown. Okay, well, I think that took that took us out of lethal range. The first thing we're going to do is buff the tie with uh, Tarkin. So he's four, raid two is six, plus three is nine. That's not quite enough for lethal yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to exhaust everyone in ground so that he doesn't get an extra heal off of Kanan. And then we're not going to use our surprise strike just yet because we don't want him to know that we have an extra three damage in hand. And then we'll pass. Oh, good. We got a ground unit to resource and relentless if we wanted to play a big space body, but I don't think we need to. Because I could tell you exactly how this turn's going to go. Because right now, since we didn't play our surprise strike last turn, the opponent sees that they've got 5 HP left and we've got 6 damage on board. So they're going to attack with Ray first to heal for 3. See? But what they don't know is that Surprise Strike is enough damage to win the game anyway. And that is how this deck is supposed to be played. GG. Well done. We had a game where we lost. We had a game where we won in kind of an unconventional way. And then we had a game at the end here where we won 
in a way or in a fashion that this deck is kind of supposed to perform where you buff up the lurking tie. Also, quite a variety of opponents this time. We did have another Red Ray, which, I mean, we've seen that in the last video, but control versus control is a little bit different than what we have here. We also saw Green Sabine uh, and the Han Solo deck, so varied opponents, which is nice. And I don't know what I'm going to be bringing for you guys next time, but uh, I've got a lot of deck ideas that I want to do. I want to continue to show meta decks, such as the ones that I've been doing, but I also want to do some fun stuff too. I'm thinking of maybe doing like a fun deck Friday where we play some games using a deck that isn't meta at all. It's just kind of fun, like a deck full of Wookiees or whatever. That's going to be it for this episode. A lot of people have been telling me they really enjoy these kind of videos where you not only get to see the deck in action, but also kind of hear some of my thought process of how I'm playing the deck. If you're one of those people and you enjoy this type of content, please like the video and leave a comment. Let me know. Also, feel free to leave a comment as to what kind of deck you'd like to see me play next. If you have a certain leader or whatever that you want to see in action, I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions. And also, if you're looking to see other Star Wars gaming content, Star Wars Outlaws comes out in like two weeks, and I'm going to be doing a playthrough of that too, so stay tuned. But that's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching. Mobius1 here, and I'll see you in the next one.